We've gone over the steps to recover from a stall. If you remember, the most important one is to reduce the angle of attack. That by itself recovers from the stall, and then to avoid altitude loss, you want to add power to maintain your directional control until you've recovered with your rudder, and eventually you want to raise the flaps and landing gear to reduce drag. Then we talked about how airspeed relates to the critical angle of attack, and the things that change the speed that an airplane will stall at, which are load factor, weight, and flaps. If the weight flaps or load factor go down, the stalling speed goes down. It gets um, smaller, so you can fly slower before you stall. And if the load factor flaps or weight go up, the stall speed goes up and you will stall at a higher speed. And this lesson for the final lesson of the school year is to go over the indications a pilot has when they're nearing their critical angle of attack so they can recover before they actually reach a stall if they're not trying to stall. The most obvious way I imagine you noticed in the video, the really annoying screeching sound. This audible tone will increase in volume and pitch as you continue to increase the angle of attack. That is called the stall warning horn. Uh, there's two main ways that it's done and that's what smaller airplanes use. So on one wing, there's two different kinds. There's an electric kind right here, and then just an airflow kind right here. And you notice both of these things, this little hole here, and this little, it's an electrical switch that can be pulled up or down by the airflow going past it. And they're both about where the leading edge meets the bottom of the wing. And to understand how they work, uh, we'll go back to our wind tunnel. The electric kind has a little paddle that sticks out into the airflow and it needs to get pulled up to activate. So you see right now the airflow would be hitting it and pushing it down. As long as that's happened or as long as it's even neutral, it's spring loaded in that direction as well. And as long as it's there, you're not going to get any sort of a stall warning. But as we increase the angle of attack, you see where the airflow starts to split changes and it starts to move lower down on the leading edge there. And so there'll come a point probably right about here where if you still have that little switch sticking out into the wind, now the wind's coming up like this and it's going to push that switch up. That's gonna complete a circuit that will sound that really annoying horn. And when you hear it, you know you're getting close to the angle that's going to cause a stall. Usually that's actually a three position switch. So if the wind's blowing it just a little bit, it'll give you that first sound. And then if the angle of attack increases even more, it'll move it all the way to the top position and that will give you that really high pitched sound that you'll hear throughout the stall until you start to recover. The second kind of stall warning horn is basically just a glorified referee's whistle. That's this one right up here. You see there's an inlet to let air in. And that inlet is basically like the back part of the whistle here. So if you were to put your mouth here and suck on that, it would make the same noise that it makes blowing through it. And so they position this hole where um, as you increase your angle of attack, suction moves forward and down on the leading edge. And by the time it hits here, you're almost at your critical angle of attack. And so it will blow the whistle. The more you increase your angle of attack beyond that, the lower the pressure will get there and the louder the whistle will sound. On larger airplanes, they have something called the angle of attack vane. And that's basically this little wing looking thing on the side of the airplane and it just rotates here. So on the ground, because there's more weight in the back, it just flops down. Um, but once you're in the air, because it has all that drag behind the rotation point, it lines itself up with the relative wind, and that allows the sensor to send the computer what the exact angle of attack is. And if it gets close to the angle of attack, it will activate something called the stick shaker. In large airplanes, because they use hydraulics, you don't get the same feel of the controls you do in a small airplane, so you wouldn't feel a buffet. So the computer actually creates a shaker to give sort of the same sensation, but that's loud enough that you don't need the annoying stall warning horn. Although the shaker is kind of annoying too. Um, this is what it sounds like. You see there's just a little physical motor right there that's shaking the yoke. 
and that tells the pilot they're getting close to the stall. And then if you continue to increase the angle of attack much past that, you'll activate the stick pusher, which is where the computer activates a motor that physically pushes the yoke forward and shoves the nose down to avoid ever actually aerodynamically stalling. That concludes our lessons on stalls. So I will be putting up a quiz that you can take about stalls. It's optional, but if you get a lower grade than your lowest quiz, it just doesn't count. And if you get a higher grade than your lowest quiz, I'll replace it. So it can only help you. If you have a really low quiz grade, it can help you a lot. So good luck with that. And uh, I hope you all have a good summer. I'll probably post a goodbye video a little bit later.